but let's make a start and anybody else can join us if they um, do so. So find yourself somewhere to stand in your room or on the centre of your mat. Um, just make sure your microphones are muted, if not already. Fabulous. Okay, so let's get going then. So coming to stand, we've got a little bit of a sequence that we're going to work quads and glutes and then we're going to follow that sequence through to calves so a little bit of repetition so you should start to feel a bit more familiar with what we're doing so just beginning with your feet hip distance apart and your knees soft just warm up through the pelvis by doing a few pelvic tilts so big bucket of water and you're just tipping your water out the front and the back of your bucket. It'll be always nice just to reconnect with that lower part of the back and pelvis. And then just rest where your bucket sits nice and level. Relax your arms down by your side. Take a breath in. We're going to go straight in with a squat. As we sit down into the squat, we're going to bring our arms up to shoulder height. And then we're going to stand back up and bring the arms down at the same time. So just get used to that movement and I'll talk you through as we go. So you want to make sure you've got equal weight going through both legs. So if any of you have any hip, knee or ankle issues, try and make sure that that weight stays equal. And if it's difficult to go quite deep, then just keep it shallow, but keep your weight nice and level. So you can just be up here, or you can come a little bit lower. Okay, we wanna keep the weight in the heels. So as you come down into that squat, you wanna be able to wiggle your toes. So you don't want your knees coming over your toes. You wanna send your weight out behind you into the back of your feet, lovely. Keep those kneecaps pointing forwards. So two beams of light shining forwards. Don't let your knees collapse into one another. Beautiful, and keep that tail tucked underneath. So as you come down, we don't want any bones sticking out. Nice long spine. And you'll notice my shoulders do travel forwards as I come down. So I'm just hinging ever so slightly at the hips. Lovely, and work to drop those shoulders down into those back pockets as the arms come up to shoulder height. I think we should be there with them now. Let's go for six more. Big connection through the heels as you come up to stand. So you're really growing tall through those legs rather than just pushing the legs back out behind you. Halfway there, two more. And hold this next one. So take it to where you can, arms out in front. Now I want you to think about those shoulders. Try not to reach forwards. Bring the shoulder blades down into the back pockets so the collarbones are open. Hold that position. Gently do a tummy towards the spine. And we're just going to glance over to one side. Look into one shoulder and coming back to the centre. Now we're testing those legs. So if you need to, you can stand up at any time, shake those legs out and join back in. Just looking from side to side. That's it. Take that rest when you need to and then join back in. Looking over those shoulders, keep those shoulders down, nice long necks, and gently draw your tummy towards your spine. Now, as we look to one side, we're going to open the arm out. Imagine the door opening and closing. Open to the opposite side and let your rib cage follow that movement. So you've got a beam of light now shining out your chest. Let it shine to the side of you and back forwards again. Lovely. Watch those shoulders have not crept up towards your ears. Your knee, your quad should really be warm now. So let's go for two more twists on each side. I've got another challenge for those legs in a minute. Yeah. Well, not in a minute, in a moment. Breathe out as you open, in as you close. Out as you open, in as you close. Stay where you are with those legs if you can. Reach down by your side and pulse into hundreds. Really engage that lower to me. If you want to, you can lift your heels off the mat. So we've not really seen my feet, but heels lifted or heels down and pulse for me. 10, 9, 8, 7, feel the burn, 6, 5, 4, 3, two and one lovely now you are allowed to stand up and give those legs a bit of a pat well done if you stay down for that whole time good work okay 
We're going to come up now with that same sequence. So just checking on that pelvis, make sure it's nice and level. You want to keep your pelvis level, but this time as we float up onto tiptoes and then coming back down again. We're going to add the arms in with that same movement. So hands just to shoulder height, especially if you've got a low ceiling in your room where you're practicing. <laughs> Good. And back down again. Lovely. This time we're going to work that pelvic floor. So as we lift the heels up, I want you to just think about a gentle squeeze from your back passage to your front passage, as if you're trying to stop yourself from peeing. Gently lift and hold and then release as you lower those heels down. Good. Now let's get those calves working just as hard. Good. Shoulders down and away. Imagine someone's connected a piece of string to the crown of your head and they're just pulling you up and then lowering you back down. And as you come up, try not to lose that position at your pelvis, really tuck under through the tailbone, and that will help you to keep your pelvic floor going. Good, we've got six more. Well done, breathing with the movement of your arms. I don't mind if you breathe in as you come up or out, just make sure you breathe. Good, four more. Calves should be getting nice and warm now. So at any point you can come down, but we're gonna hold this next one, okay? So lift and hold hands at shoulder height and look to your left, a little bit of a balance challenge here. Sorry, mom, she asked for no balance. And over to your opposite side. Good, and back to your first side. And opposite side, remember you can shake those legs out and join back in. Now we're going to add that arm opening. So as you rotate, look over to one side, open the arm out and twist the upper back. Come back to the centre and repeat on the opposite side. Good. Back to centre. And again, oh, lost my balance. Twist and centre. Breathing out as you open with this one, just because we're using that rib cage, we really want to try and get rid of some of the air in the lungs so that we can go a bit further. Final one on each side because those calves should be burning now. Good. Okay, facing forwards, keep those heels lifted, hands by your side and pulse. So hundreds with a heel raise. If you want to, you can come into a knee bend, but keep those heels lifted too. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Lovely. Lower those legs down and give them a shake out. Good stuff, everyone. So hopefully that's gotten you a bit warm. I'm just going to come and see if anybody else has joined us. Hi, Emma. Lovely. Okay, so what I'd like you to do, oh hi Isabel, I'd like you just to come to kneel for me now. So facing forward still, but we're going to come into a high kneeling position. I think everybody's good with kneeling here, but if you do struggle, you can sit as an alternative. So when you come to kneel, make sure that your hips are stacked over your knees and you're not sort of sitting back, slouching into that position. So stack those knees over the hips and make sure you've got a little space between your knees as well. I'm just going to adjust my camera. That's looking a bit better. So knees hip distance apart. Let's do some pelvic tilts from here as well. Feels slightly different as we pelvic tilt. So if you really tuck your tail underneath and push your pelvis forwards, you should get some separation between the pelvis and the thigh muscles and you get a nice big stretch down those hip flexors. Good stuff. Okay, two more tilts forwards, uh, backwards, lovely, and then come to where your pelvis sits roughly level, so you can be in sitting if kneeling doesn't work for you. Okay, let's do some arm work to begin with, we're going to come into our dumb waiter, we're going to bring those arms out to the side, and back forwards again, so remember we're holding two trays of drinks and we're just floating them either side and back in. Really focus on gently drawing the shoulder blades together as the hands open and try to avoid any flaring movement at the rib cage. So we really want to connect that rib cage down towards our waist and we can use our tummy to help with that. So gently draw tension through your tummy as your hands float out to the side and then release. Are we okay, Elaine? 
Float the hands out to the side. And then release. Lovely. Two more. We're going to add a little bit of quadriceps strengthening now, but also stretching. So as we take our trays out to the side, from here, I want you to start to slowly lean back. As you lean back, push your pelvis forwards, big stretch along the thighs, and then use your tummy to come back up to sit again, to kneel, sorry. So trays out to the side, lean back, feel that big stretch and come forwards. Now I know for some people that big stretch might feel uncomfortable in the knees, so just make your lean a little bit smaller. For those of you that are happy, go for it and come back forwards again. So you're almost doing, taking it to the point of no return, but then catching yourself before and bringing yourself back up. It's kind of like Michael Jackson in all those videos where he just does that incredible move where he just leans and then brings himself back up to stand. He must have done loads of Pilates to be able to do that. <laughs> okay, we've got three more. Two more. We're going to take this next one and we're going to hold it. So go to where you can, hold, hands down and pulse. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, oh, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Let me come back up and then just sit back down onto your heels and stretch your arms out in front. Well done, everyone. So lots of quads work in that little warm up there. Bit of strengthening and a bit of stretching. Okay, let's just push to one side, take the hands across and push in towards the opposite heel. And then let's swap sides, just to open up the sides of the back. Okay, coming to a box position. You can stay where you are, but I'm just gonna turn side on for you. So from here, we're gonna work into our cat cow. So hopefully we're all pretty happy with that. So for our cat stretch, we're really arching the spine. Tummy comes up towards the spine. We um, draw the chin towards the chest, push through the heels of the hands and tuck the tail underneath. Nice big flexion through the spine, and then we go into our cow stretch, which is the opposite. So we're arching the lower back, belly button down towards the back, tailbone lifted, and you're going to look forwards or look upwards. So big tug through the tummy, and then just swap into your cat stretch and cow stretch. So just move between the two, breathing throughout. Very nice. Just enjoy that nice opportunity to stretch through your spine, these look lovely. And you know how we talk about the spine, we talk about it being segmental. We wanna try and get every segment of the spine to move and try not to find kind of any stiff areas, get them working through. These look beautiful. Oh, hi Sue, I didn't see you join us. Very nice, everyone. Okay, now that is gonna enable you to find somewhere in the middle of those two positions so that we can do our press-ups. So I've snuck them in in the middle today so you haven't got a sneaky surprise at the end. So we've been working on these quite a bit both in class and online. But just to remind you, keep the back of your head lifted, shoulders down away from ears, and most importantly, no bums up, tail is tucked underneath. So we can keep them fairly shallow or we can take them all the way down and take the chest over the hands. Or for those of you that want to, you can do a full press up. So choose your option and just get going, okay? I'm going to count down 12. So you can either keep up with my count for 12 or you can do as many as you feel able to. So that's 12, super slow, really push through the door, through the floor, 11, You'll notice we've added two every week. <laughs> 10, keep the back of the head lifted. Let your chest lead, not your nose. Nine, the trouble with me talking is I forget what number I'm on. Eight, good, tighten the tummy to the spine. Seven, as much of the core exercise as it is shoulders. Six, halfway. Five, challenge yourself to go as low as you did on your first one, unless you're struggling. Four, 
three. Remember those elbows are going at a 45 degree angle. Two. And one more. Beautiful stuff. Well done, everyone. Sit back towards your heels and rest off those wrists for a moment. I'm determined to get us strong with these press ups. Okay, just give your shoulders a little bit of a roll as you rest down on your mat. And then you're going to choose your option for our next exercise, which is going to be our leg pull or our plank. So you can either be here in your box position, remember with a gap between your knees, you've got a nice long spine, we all know how to set up for that now. The toes are tucked underneath and we stick the tummy to the spine and lift the knees off the mat without lifting the bottom in the air. So the knees stay bent at around 90 degrees, we lift and we lower. Or your option either is to lift and hold, really working on that tension through your tummy, and your pelvic floor. And then your third option is your full leg pull. So remember that we're gonna lift the knees, extend in the box and take your weight over your hands. Now here, we wanna create a diagonal line through the body. Don't let the head hang down. Back of the neck is lifted, shoulders are down. Thumbs not in the air, it's just below the rib cage and the tail is tucked underneath. Now you may find you want to lift and lower in and out of that plank position. That is beautiful. Or we can lift and hold. So have a little play around with those. See what you feel able to do. Maybe challenge yourself to go between the two. Well done, Jill. Good. Good work, Tim. A little bit lower with those hips. You've got it. So you're trying to bring your shoulders over your wrists. And that's what makes it full body exercise. Lovely Helen. Well done Sue. Elaine, that's great. Little bit lower with your bottom. That's it. Well done. Isabel looks great. Lauren looks great. Just took your tailbone underneath a touch. Beautiful. Liz, I saw you adjust your camera. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, I'm going to join in because these look great. Well done, everyone. Nobody, well, from the people I can see, everyone went for the full option. So I'm going to give you a countdown from 10. So you can either choose to hold or come in and out of your planks. 10, 9, lift the back of the neck. 8, shoulders down towards your back pockets. 7, hollow your chest ever so slightly away from the floor. 6, 5, four, three, two, and one. Super, let's come down onto the mat and we're gonna push straight into the cobra stretch. So for our cobra stretch, we just lengthen away from the mat. The arms can be straight, but the elbows can be slightly bent. Shoulders down, be long through your neck. Good, I think we all know our cobra now. Just gently clench your buttocks together just to take a little bit of a tilt out of the pelvis. And then slowly lower yourself down onto the mat and come to light on your back swarming. So last little section, we're gonna do some rest work, but we are gonna work backs and tummies. So if you need to, just after that plank sequence, you can just hug your knees towards your chest as we set up for some bridges. So, Bridge is a really nice opportunity to work through the segmental mobility of your spine. So imagine you're stuck to your mat and you're trying to peel your spine off the mat. So when you're ready, you're going to start in a rest position. That means your knees are bent and your feet are on the mat. And remember that football, it's back between our knees. So try not to let your knees cave into one another. Keep them in line with your hip football place between them. Okay, we're gonna start by gently pressing the small of the back on the mat, and that allows our tailbone to lift. Then from there, we slowly peel the spine off the mat, working through one bone at a time, until you're resting just at the tops of the shoulder blades and on your feet. Now, if you've got your hands on the floor, that's fine. Don't brace though, don't use your hands to lift you. Just let them relax down by your side. And then slowly smooth your spine back down on the mat again, trying to work one bone at a time. Once you get to the bottom, you can just repeat that. So squash the spine down, lift through the tailbone. It's quite a nice opportunity to work your pelvic floor because you're using gravity to assist that lift. 
and then slowly lower down. Now try not to let all of your weight collapse into your shoulders. So as you come up into the bridge, when you get to the top, just think about shifting your knees towards your feet. So you're almost sliding off the tops of your shoulders before you lower back down again. And I promise you, as soon as you do that, you just really feel your hamstrings go ping and they'll get working. Let's spend a little bit of time working on these bridges because, as I mentioned earlier, they're a really nice opportunity to get the back moving. But you should hopefully feel that creating some energy through the backs of the legs, the glutes and the hamstrings. You come and see how you're doing. Good work. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> Very nice. Super, and these don't need to be rushed. So a breath out is a nice way of floating you up towards the ceiling and then breath in to lower back down. Try not to let your rib cage flare up as well. So that idea of connecting your rib cage towards your waist. So you're not using that rib cage to lift you up, keeping that connection and using the back extensors, lovely. Okay, I'm going to show you a few ways that you can progress from here. So if you want to just keep working on your bridges, that's fine, but everybody looks great. So now we're going to challenge the control of the pelvis. So imagine you've got a spirit level resting across the bones of your pelvis. Let's see if you can keep that spirit level nice and level, holding your next bridge. And then you're just going to peel one heel off the mat at a time. So you're coming onto tiptoes on one foot and lowering and then tiptoes on the other foot. Okay, but it doesn't really matter too much how your feet are moving, it's keeping that level position at your pelvis. So popping your hands across the front of your pelvis is quite helpful, just to give you a little bit of feedback. Now at any time, you can choose to come down out of your bridge, lower down one bone at a time, and then repeat. Or you can just keep working until you feel that you need a little bit of a rest. Okay, so we're peeling away. Lifting one heel and lower, one heel and lower. But as I say, it's about the pelvis, not necessarily about the movement at the hips. So you've got a tray of drinks there resting on your waist. Keep that tray of drinks level. Good work, everyone. Beautiful. Okay, keep going with your heel lifts. I'm going to show you a harder option. It's quite a big step up. Um, so you can give it a try, see how you go. This time, rather than doing heel lifts, we're going to float the legs into scissors. So we're going to bring one knee, stack it over the hip, and then we lower it down. And then the other leg comes up. So really focusing as you lift one leg, but the opposite hip doesn't dip down. So a bit more of a challenge on strength and stability. We give it a go. You could just do one leg and then lower down. Lift up and do the other leg. So there's loads of ways that you can make this more um, accessible if you find that the walking legs are too hard. But if you do feel like in general it's too much, just go to those heel lifts, okay? I'm going to keep you there a short while longer, so choose your option and go for it. Nice. Beautiful tabletops this evening. Very good, everyone. Lovely options. Okay. Slowly come down and hug your knees towards your chest. We've got one more option with your bridge. We're going to do six on each side. So I'll show you what your two levels are and you can choose which level you're going to do. So level one, you have your left foot close towards your bottom and your right foot a little bit further away and you lift and lower. We do six of these and then we swap. So then you have your right foot closer, your left foot further away. So you're just kind of staggering one foot in front of the other. So the idea is that one leg is having to work harder, the leg that's closer to you being that one. If you want to work on a single leg bridge, you're going to float one leg into tabletop and then you're going to take all of that weight through your one leg that's on the mat. We come here for six and then we swap over 
and six on one side. So it's either a staggered bridge or a single leg bridge. Choose your option. You can give either a little go, test it out, and then go for it. So six on each side. And then when you're done, just let me know by hugging your knees towards you. So don't worry too much about peeling with these. I want you to sort of almost thrust your hips up, big squeeze of your bottoms. Let's get those bottoms and hamstrings working hard. Bit more of a power move. Oh, wow, great stuff. Beautiful. And once you've hit that sixth one, swap sides. Don't forget to swap after number six. We're almost coming to the end there. Lovely. Yeah. And then you've once you've done six on each side, you can give your knees a hug. And that knee hug should feel delicious as you've just worked lots of extension and then you pull your spine into flexion. Good work. So I'm starting to see people coming into those knee hugs now, but don't rush it if you're still going. Just enjoy that knee hug if you're there. Good, okay. Smashing, I think we're all there. Everybody I can see anyway. Beautiful, so we're just gonna finish with some abdominal work now. So I think everybody who's here seems quite happy with your double tabletop. So we're gonna come into a double tabletop. Now if that feels like it's too much, you can always drop down to a single. But remembering that you've got a little sponge in the small of your back. And you're trying not to squash that sponge or lift off that sponge as you stack both knees over your um, hips, okay? You can bring your knees together. Just trying to remember what I planned. Yeah, bring your knees together because we're just going to finish with hundreds. So the knees are gently pressed together. We reach the hands down towards the feet, but then hover the hands off the mat and start to pulse. So we're going to be here for three counts of 10, or for those of you that want to, you can add a head and shoulders lift. Okay, I'm going to count, so when you're ready, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. We slowly just have a little rest down. And if you need to, just give those knees a hug. Brilliant. Okay, pause for a moment, and then we're going to go again. So we're going to do three times over. So just a prompt, if you're doing your head and shoulders lift, remember you've got a little gap between your chin and your chest. Okay. When you're ready, set yourself up. I'm going to start counting. Yeah, round two. Good. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, knees over hips, not too close. Five, four, three, two, and one. Super, okay. <laughs> Slowly lower down. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, one more, final one. I'm gonna join in for you. Okay, so set yourselves up. Now, if anybody wants to go for a full hundred, it's exactly the same, but with straight legs. So good opportunity to lengthen those hamstrings, feet towards the ceiling, toes pointed, thighs engaged, and we pulse. You can do that with a head lifted or lowered. 10, nine, eight, really draw your legs towards your head. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, lovely, slowly down, and hug those knees towards you, gentle rock from side to side. Good work, let's take that into a full spine twist, so arms either side, just let your knees roll across, bring them up and over, you can do that with the feet on or off the floor, whichever you feel most comfortable with. One more up from side to side. Just conscious that we might disconnect in a second. So apologies if I lose you, but let's just finish with a nice full body stretch along the mat. So take your hands over to the top and your feet down to the bottom and stretch apart, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Lovely stuff. Okay, I will leave you there to stretch out more if you need to. Otherwise, come and see me at the screens just to say goodbye.